Hi, Chris Petri here. Welcome. It's another Extreme Beginners video. We're going to have so much fun creating these three paintings. Not one, not two, but three paintings. Yes, we're going to have a great time. We're going to work through each one, cover all the details and steps that you need to work through each of these. We'll cover everything, the brushes, the colors, the paints, the drawing, the washes, the techniques, the methods, everything is going to be covered here as we go one by one, each of the paintings. And by the end of this video, you'll have three paintings completed. And I absolutely know that you will have good results on each one of them. One of them might come out really beautiful. Another couple might come out okay, pretty good. Who knows, maybe one or two might even turn out to be terrible, but you might have one that turns out great. So that's why we're doing three. This way, you know, if you're doing three paintings, you're going to have at least one that comes out really good that you're going to be happy with. Something you can put in a frame, put on the wall, put on the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? Have a good time with this. Enjoy it. We're having fun. This is the first painting. We're going to do a beautiful flower painting. And then after this, we're going to do a gorgeous, beautiful ocean scene with the beach, the um, ocean, a little bit of a tree here with a little bit of foliage on there just for fun to enjoy, to have a little bit of nice... Um, uh, nature along with the ocean here and finally we're going to do a beautiful English gorgeous mansion with beautiful chimneys and windows and shadowing a couple of figures some bushes and trees really exciting um, paint colors and tonal values night a lot of night lights and darks in this one so I know all three of these are going to be absolutely a lot of fun so let's get ready let's get set let's go All right, so here we are at the beginning, the starting point for us. We're going to do at least uh, three, maybe four paintings. We'll see how it turns out, but I'm right at the beginning right now. But you just did see our finished paintings, so this is a good thing. You've uh, kind of been able to look at the finished paintings when we uh, just started out this video about 30 seconds ago. And uh, you can work from those. I'm hoping you're going to work from each of the finished paintings um, as we go. So... Um, let's get started in a second here. We'll show how you, we'll show everything, how we lay out our paper. Uh, I'm going to divide my paper in fours. This is an 11 by 14 sheet of paper. So you'll see how I divide this up here. Let's get started. So I'm just going to use a, a T square ruler to get a perfect, um, straight line to divide up my paper into fourths. So I'm going to do four sheets within this one sheet of an 11 by 14. Um, you can also do it another way you can just measure it with a regular standard ruler you can use a regular ruler and then just make your marks uh you can make your uh center marks so you'd want to make a center mark right in the middle of your paper both ways and that's all you have to do and then you just draw your lines and then you trim it with a uh, um, pair of scissors and then even another way we can do it let's try it this way actually to make it real simple if you have an 11 by eight like this here, 11 by 14 sheet of uh, watercolor paper, and I have the, um, I use Fabriano Studio watercolor, which is kind of like their student grade paper. I use this a lot. Great paper, um, but any old paper will work. Any uh, watercolor paper, any any watercolor paper works fine. Um, you, always remember though, the more expensive the watercolor paper, um, the higher grade papers like Arches, Fabriano, Buckingford. Um, uh, let's see what else we have. Um, Hannah Mule. There's also um, Fluid Paper. Um, there's Yeah, there's quite a few that are really, really good. So you kind of just have to shop around. There's a lot, a lot of good um, YouTube channels on paper. You know, you can look up all kinds of different uh, videos on watercolor paper and the different uh, grades of paper and the different types of paper. There's rough paper. There's smooth paper. This is, this is a rough paper. And again, it's the... Fabriano student watercolor. It's a pad. You just tear off the sheets one one uh, at a time as you go. So, but this is how we can quarter this and make it four sheets. I just fold it once, and you probably all know this, right? You just fold it over once, crease it, make a crease in that. That's your first. <clears throat> your first bend or fold. And you can take a piece of watercolor tape, water, uh, anything. I'm using watercolor brush. I'll use that watercolor brush, and I'll just really press on it, though. So I use the 
the wood handle of the watercolor brush and press really good on this paper right down the center and this way we can actually do that again on the other side I would only do it on one side though really but you could do it on both that's fine and then you can just tear it like that carefully holding it down like this just to make sure it doesn't get away from you and there you go now we have two two sheets right here half of an 11 by 14 then we can take it again and fold it in half one more time and that'll give us our, our four sheets so we'll do that again fold it in half use our watercolor brush quickly like that and then we take it fold it back the other way we do this carefully though so that we don't bend and make all kinds of like creases in our paper we want to kind of keep it somewhat neat but that's all we have to do and then we can just start it and then just hold it really firmly on here you can also take like a ruler you could hold a ruler like this down on the paper press down on that like this and then lift it up that's another good way you can do it like that that works perfect look at that and then the same thing here I'll do I'll bend this over once to another half of a fold so now we're at our last two pieces out of the 11 by 14 we take a quick pass with our watercolor brush there the watercolor handle of the watercolor brush and we can take this and then again we can put a ruler on top of that right where the crease is right on the crease and then press down on the ruler and then lift up the paper and we kind of got a little bit of an unpleasant tear there so sometimes it doesn't always work but you really we can't go wrong doing it this way was we just start it there and then kind of on an angle like this so we're kind of pulling it this way this way and I keep my hand on the table because I want to keep this paper sort of kind of the same plane as this part of the sheet of paper over here there we go so that's pretty good so there's all different ways to um, divide your paper into four sections and then you know section it off trim it you can use scissors again you can use the ruler a little bit you can use a t-square to, to use pencil lines to get it perfect if you want but I think any of those ways work. So whatever work, uh, any way that you want to do it, that's fine. You're the artist. You'll decide how you want to section off your paper. You can maybe just, you can, another way too is just fold it. Um, fold it. And then with the scissors, trim along where you folded it. So if you take your paper and you bend it like this and fold it and then open it up again, you can use your scissors and just trim along that kind of mark you'll see when you fold your paper. So... All kinds of fun ways to do this, but I figure I'd show just a couple different things on how to section off our paper. And then now we're going to do this. And then we're also going to do something interesting too. Uh, I kind of ran out of paint on my uh, Prang Oval 16 set here. So we have our Prang Oval 16 set. I'm going to tape this down to my board. So we, we can take a second here and just kind of get ourselves situated a little bit with our gear our um, supplies and everything so what I'll do is first thing I like to do is just tape down my I like to tape down my my palette so I'll take my palette and use a little bit of um, tape Okay, and that just prevents this from moving around so it's nice and sturdy like that and then we have our paper over here so the next thing we'll do is we'll just take our tape let's tape down our first sheet of paper and I'm going to leave a small a small bit of um So 
So I'll, I'll tape maybe a quarter of an inch in so you can kind of see how my tape is about a quarter of an inch on top of the paper there. I made that little bit of a crease so you can kind of see that. So I'm just taping over, over only about a quarter of an inch of the paper. So this way we can use most of our paper. We don't want to waste too much of it. And then uh, we'll have another same thing over here, quarter of an inch. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as you kind of get a bit of that tape over the edge of the paper, which is great. So you have a nice crisp edge when you're done. You can just peel it up and you have a nice border around your painting. So there we go. And again, I'll crease it just a little bit so you can kind of see the the way I kind of taped that down. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, start drawing. Let's get going here. Um, first one we're going to do is our flowers. Before I do that though, let me just start preparing here. I'm going to spritz this part of the palette here and the paints too as well. So here we go. I'm spritzing both sides of the palette. We'll wipe up this here with some paper towel in a few seconds once that kind of sets a little bit like that. So now the first bit we're going to do here is some gorgeous, uh, I don't know, let's try to think here. Let me just take a quick look over here. I'm trying to uh, maybe do a little bit of research here as I go. These are uh, narcissist flowers. So when we do our flowers here, I'm just going to kind of do a grouping of three flowers. And I'll maybe start off with the one in the sort of the center here. So let me, first thing I'll do is a light preliminary sketch. I'm hoping you'll see this when we kind of, okay. Okay, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to take this first one, center of the flower. Okay, that's our first flower, and then we'll do another one up here. And this one here is going to be on an angle. Okay, that one's on, we're seeing kind of the profile of this flower. And then over here we're going to have another one. Let's do another one down here. There's a little bit of space between this flower. And I'll just do a little bit of uh, just a little bit of uh, racing there. The center of the flower there. Okay, so now we have three flowers here. Narcissus flowers, and then we'll have. The stems, and we're just going to kind of put the stems down here. I don't think we're going to worry about anything more than just having a few leaf forms there. 
and some flowers and we'll, we'll start to work on this now with our washes. So now um, let's take a quick break. I always mention that. If, hopefully we're going to take some breaks. I'm hoping you're going to keep thumbsing up my videos. Um, it's really simple. Right underneath the screen here on the, uh, as you're looking at the, the video here on YouTube, if you just go right down underneath the uh, video, the actual video screen, you'll see a little thumbs up button. If you can hit the thumbs up, that's a great thing. That's really going to help me a lot on YouTube. So um, that is really I'm hoping I'll uh, be able to, for, I hope most of you will give me a thumbs up at this point. <laughs> We've covered a lot of ground already so far. we got a long way to go, though, so I'm going to keep mentioning it to you as we go. Okay, so let's take a quick break. We'll come right back, and then we'll get started with painting these three uh, beautiful leaf, uh, leaf forms and flowers, um, the Narcissus flowers. And then we're going to keep moving on to our next painting, or two, or three, or even four, maybe. We're going to make this a marathon extreme beginner series, okay? All right, so let's get uh, uh, busy in just a minute. Let's always need to take a break, though. Let's do it. All right, let's get started here on the painting portion. Um, I know you can see the pencil drawing. I'm looking through my viewfinder right now, and I can see it myself, so I'm thinking you have enough information there that you can kind of see the, the pencil lines. Um, if not, I can actually go over with a darker pencil line. Let me do that quickly before we start painting. So I'm just going to go over this one more time with a little bit of a darker pencil line. And I'll start right the same way I did over here. And I just started over here like this. And there's the circle there, the center of the flower, the narcissist flowers we're doing. And there you go. I'm just going around again. And I'm just going to trace over these lines. So that's what I'm really doing here is tracing over the lines so you can see them. They're a, little dark, they're a little bit light, so if I can get them a little bit darker so you can see them, that might be better. Okay, and like that. And this one's there. And there's some stems here and some leaf forms like that. Okay, and then this up here. Like that. Alright, so I think that Going over this a little darker, you can kind of see a little better the, the leaf forms. I hope that helps a little bit if you're, um, if you're perhaps sometimes your uh, audio or your video equipment, maybe your phone or your um, TV monitor or your laptop monitor or your um, computer, your uh, computer monitor. Sometimes they don't always have really good strong visibility, so um, I'm hoping this will help out. And then, again, let's continue on here. Let's, uh, again, spice up our palette a little bit, juice it up with some water, spritzer bottle water here. There we go. And I'm running out of a little bit of water here, so i got to maybe get another bottle over here with some... Okay, there's... Okay, let's see here. And then if I run out of water with my water bottle, my spritzer bottle, I just take my spritzer bottle, and I find that the easiest way to kind of um, fill up my spritzer bottle is just to use a, a bottled water. Bottled water works perfect. You just kind of rest it on there, fill it up, and it's good to go. And then I have to find the other top of this. There we go. Okay, now we have that all good to go, filled to the brim. And uh, let's take our... I'm trying to find myself a water bucket. Okay, so now I have my water bucket all set up. So I'll fill up a water bucket with water, clean, fresh water, crystal clear water. And now what I'll do is when I have that water bucket filled with water, and then I'm going to... Forgive me for this, but I, I'm running out of paint right now on my... I have to order more Prang palettes. But if I take my brush here and I just scrub around the interior of the, 
that gives me some good uh, paint so I can do that for that that color and I also notice too my yellow my lemony yellow is the same thing I'm kind of running out of that so now I'm just going to scrub around the outer edges of that paint well in my oval 16 prang oval 16 set and there we go I have more orange and yellow paint okay so now I've done that I'm good the blues, the purples, everything else looks pretty good. I think I have plenty of paint for the rest. So now the first thing I'd like to do is, um, I think I'll use my um, Simply Simmons number no. nine brush. It's a round brush, synthetic. What I'll do is I think the first thing I'd like to do before I do anything is. I'm just going to just clean up the palette. <clears throat> so that's all the colors that we spritz with water to kind of loosen up that paint. And now you can kind of see we have a simple way to just clean up the palette quickly. And now we have all fresh, a nice palette. All the, all the uh, wells are nice and clean. The working surfaces here are nice and clean. No muddy looking washes in there everything's clean to start with that's what you want to have right before you start any new painting is your whole palette needs to be all clean like this that's the way I do it of course if you find a different way to do it that's fine too you're the artist um, but I, I think this is the best way is just start out fresh palette and then we can start mixing our colors ahead of time I'm just going to quickly orange and blue, orange and blue and green, orange, blue and green, orange, blue and green might be really good for us just to start there and start painting around our flowers here. So what we can do is we can start painting around the flowers and this is called negative shape painting. And what that does is, as you paint around these flowers, they will appear. I'll take some of that color and I'll just start working right out into the outer edges of the painting. Might as well just get that in now so we can blend it all together. That looks good. Okay, so that's all you want to do is work this background color right up to the petals of the flower at the top of your painting here. I think if you do that at the top of the painting, you're going to be really all set. You're really kind of your negative shape painting around the petals of the flower again. And then what you can do is you can just do the top for now like that. Then we'll put some purple in there too. Add some purple everywhere quickly though. We don't have much time over here on these other sections. Ooh, you got to do that fast. You might have we might have been better off mixing the purple in with this up here too when we started. But okay, we didn't do that, but now I realize I want to have some of that purple in there. So I just quickly do it though, and that's all I have time for. And that's it. There's That'll be okay, I think. Now we take this mixture of purple and blue and orange and we start to maybe have a little bit of some shadowing on the petals of the flower up there. That looks good. Where else? We might see a little more shadow here with some purple. Like that. So we're going to put some shadowy washes on the petals of the flower, but not everywhere though. We're going to leave some And we're going to move quick too. Let's move fast through this. Let's not take too much time. So I'll blend that right in like so. Same thing up there. There's a little bit there, a little bit here. So I'm just adding in some of that medium tonal value, medium wash. 
and I try to add it here and there. And I think you're going to have good success with this now. We have damp brush like that and then maybe even a little touch of yellow and if I put yellow one place I have to do it everywhere orange is close to yellow so I wouldn't worry too much up here I'll just put a tiny bit of yellow golden wash on this part of the leaf forms over here and then remembering to add some of that purple too so you're moving quickly here you're noticing that there are shadowy kind of bits of shadow on your leaves or you know your leaf forms and your uh, as well as your petals of your flower leaf forms are going to be over here actually so let's get our leaf forms I'm working so fast, I'm losing track of things a little bit. I hope you'll forgive me for that. So let's do our leaf forms over here. So this is kind of an olivey green. I'll just do the whole kitten caboodle here with the olivey green. Okay, and then when I get that olivey green in there, well, then I can get a little more, spice it up a little bit with some... Uh, green and yellow the light green and the yellow the lemony yellow and there we go look at that you can sort of you know give that a little bit of uh spruce up the uh, greens here a little bit if you want and then go back down to your olivey green make sure too where the shadows might be Okay, I'll make some, some green forms over here. Well, that might be a leaf, bit of leaf forms in there. Like that. So maybe there in the center. There's a bit of some darker darks right in the middle of this. Okay, so that's fine to do that. You can also take a tissue and then lighten this up a little bit. That darker dark we made in here a couple splashes are good kind of add some different bits of interest into the painting all right so now let's get in some of our orangey red like that that looks good, doesn't it? Wow. Some yellow. Like that. A little bit of red around there. All right, so, so oh, you can see how that little bit of orange and red really looks great. It just kind of really pops out of the painting looking really good and then we can also sort of finish up now with the rest of the painting with some of our blues and purples down here it's a little cooler maybe in the painting a little cooler down this way a little bit of the greens but let's just start to put the rest of the washes down here we add a little bit of those other colors. Let's repeat colors. So these oranges and reds, let's, let's put them around other places. Blue, 
blue up here too. I don't want to. Okay, I want to mix all the same colors we're using. Blue, greens, so blue and green. And you can just start getting in your washes now on the bottom of this. Swirl around if you want to, or if you want to be more conservative and just kind of do some downstrokes like this, that's fine too. However you want to paint this, it's all up to you. As an artist, I, you know, I have practiced a lot on brush strokes and brush work, so I tend to do a lot of the, you know, fancier, but you don't have to do that. If you don't want to do that, your, your style might be different than mine, and that's okay. Always remember, you're the artist, you decide what style you want to paint how you want to paint, how you want to use your brush, whatever. It's all good. So let's just not argue about it and call it a day and just say, you know, use your brush the way you want to use it. Get some paint on there, some water and paint, and then, you know, mix it around. And by this time you should have a really nice looking effect of background colors, nice medium tones, right? Medium tones for your background colors. And then you have your light white petals of your Narcissus flowers, for the most part with some very, very light washes of shadowing on those uh, petals of your flower. And then again, we did add some really beautiful uh, orange and red and yellow for the center of our flowers here. So that gives it a real bit of excitement. And there we have it. Now if you notice that up and let's say up top looks a little different than below here. No worries. I would let this dry on the bottom and then maybe try to add in some colors that you need to balance it out a little bit. Maybe we need some purple in here. Like that. Purple there. Like so. And But for the most part, I think this is fine. I think you. this is all we need to do. If anything, we could add a little bit of that green, the dark green, a little bit of brown, maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of orange or red. And if you wanted to add just a couple of really good darks here. Just maybe a couple mystery dark darks here. Then maybe a little bit of water in that dark mix there, and a couple of splashes, like that. And that's good. I call this finished. And then all we have to do now is let this dry, and we'll peel off the tape. Um, so let's do that. Let, let us, right now, let this dry. I'm going to use the blow dryer, dry this off with the blow dryer, and then what I'll do is we'll peel off the tape. Then you can use this actually for your finished painting. You can hit the pause button and paint right from this, or you could also do a screen capture and then print it out on some printer paper. If you have, if you're really tech, you know, tech, you know, tech savvy and you have computers and laptops and printers, you can always do screenshots of all my paintings on YouTube and cer certainly print them out on your printer and work from those. That's fine by me. Um, so main thing is we're we're learning, we're practicing. That's my intent here. I'm not worried about, you know, if you're printing out my paintings or not. So, but I want to just let this dry quickly for a few minutes and then we'll come right back. So I'll stop the tape. You're hard, you'll hardly notice that I stopped the tape right now. But also I remember, please, please give me a thumbs up. That would be great. It helps my channel a lot. So if your thumbs up, it's right on the bottom here on the bottom of the screen. There's a little thumbs button that says thumbs up. Click on that button. 
if you like what I'm doing here, if you like our work that we're doing together, and if that's the case, well, you better give me a thumbs up. All right, okay. Otherwise, I'm going to talk to you in the comment section and find out why you're not doing it. Give me a thumbs up, would you? All right, I'm only kidding around. All right, so come on. Let's get finished up here. We'll peel off the tape and we'll start another one. All right, so we're back again and uh, we said we were going to just peel off the tape here on this painting and we'll get the next one started. Okay, so now what I noticed about this tape is this tape is not that... Uh, um, the, the tackiness of the tape is not so great on this, this tape. I actually had it sitting around in my studio for a number of years and I realized that after, after a couple of years maybe, I bought a, you know some tape on sale... And then that sat around for a couple of years and it loses its uh, tackiness and its, you know, properties of keeping the paper nice and sealed off from the watercolor. So the watercolor leaked under the tape, as, as you can see here, maybe. But in any case, that's our first painting. We got it done. We worked hard on this one, but we had fun too. And we didn't go too serious with this. We kind of had some fun with those, you know, medium, medium tonal values around the outer edges on the background. And we left uh, all the petals of the flowers essentially white to start with. And then we just added a very, very light wash on a few th spots here and there on the petals of the flowers. Kind of tying it into the background a little bit. You can kind of see that. We kind of tied in the, the flowers and the shadows into the background here, 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 over this section over here of this petal. And this petal over here we did a little bit. But... You know, that's kind of good if you can tie in the flower petals to the background a little bit with the same kind of colors and tonal values, the, the darks and lights of it. And then here we did some really, we did some really nice colors that popped really nice, the orange and the reds for the centers of the flowers. And then we did again, we just talked about using some dark greens here, uh, but you know, between the flower petals and the flowers to give it a little bit of a nice good dark there. Some dark darks, a little bit of dark darks mostly medium tonal values and then just a little bit of the lights on the uh, petals of the flower so that's a good combination of uh, tonal values you know the way we kind of use that pint quart gallon effect uh, I cover that in my book uh, I'll also have a link below for my new book where I cover how you can really make your paintings very very pleasant and pleasing looking by having the right combination of lights and darks so here we did use that uh, combination of uh, a gallon. If we're talking about quantities, like if we're baking a cake and we say we need, you know, a cup of this, a quarter cup of that, and a teaspoon of this, that's the same thing with a painting. You can make a really, you know, you can make a wonderful cake or um, pie or a, a delicious meal by using the right amounts of quantities of your um your, your food that you're going to use in your recipes. And the same thing with a painting. You can make a painting look really good just in itself. You can make a painting look good or better even and enhance it by just using certain quantities of the lights and darks in your painting. So this one here we used, um, let's just say a little bit of the darks. That might be like a, a pint. And then we used a quart of the whites or the lights. And then we used a whole gallon, a whole bunch of medium tones here. So that's a good... Um, way to design your painting and it's kind of simple it's not something you have to really think about too much other than just when you first start out you might say hmm how am I going to make this kind of work with a pint quart and gallon uh, of lights and darks that's all it really is and again I, in my book I go in it uh, into that in detail I'm hoping you're going to pick up my book I have a lot of great insights and uh, interesting ways you can compose your paintings to look better and I have a lot of those methods and techniques in my book um, so you'll see my book uh, below in the comments section uh, and uh, in the uh, description below you know I have a link to it so you can you can check out my book too I can if you look uh, below in the uh, comment section not even the comment section it's actually the description box right below this video here you'll see that you can actually look at all of my book on a video I have a video of my book and I just flip through all the pages so you can see everything I have there and you'll notice I have lots of things lots of insights into how you can design your paintings to look better and um, so that's uh, something I'm really proud of and happy that I'm hoping you'll check it out all right so we're done with this
painting here, and we're going to move on to our next uh, painting. So um, let's get geared up for that. I'll take another quick uh, break now just to go get my uh, other uh, information I need to get set up here before we start the next one. Okay, so I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to get started with painting two. Let's uh, take some tape and just get some tape on here. This tape tends to be a little bit better than the other tape I was using. I, I think I just had maybe a couple bad rolls of tape. Maybe that happens too once in a while. Maybe, you know, the tape machines that are making the tape run out of uh, glue or something like that and they just don't come out good. I can't kind of know why that specifically happened to the couple of the rolls I had here, but this one seems to be working great. So I just have to chalk it up to a, it's a mystery. So, all right, so now we have our next, we're going to use the landscape, um, or we're going to uh, place our paper in the landscape um, setting. So the first painting we did, we did a portrait, so we had the paper like upright. Now we're taking and doing a landscape uh, style format. And what I'll do is we're going to do kind of just a real fun seascape, uh, you know, kind of beach and seascape kind of style. And I think I'm just going to go with real simple um uh, layout here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the paper down into thirds and say, all right, if this is one third, one third here, one third here, and so this would be three thirds. So that'd be one third, two thirds, and three thirds. So we're going to break our painting down and say, all right, let's make it thirds going up this way. Let's make the uh, ocean, the horizon line of the ocean, one third up, okay? Let's try that. I think that's going to look good. You can also go with the ocean horizon line two thirds of the way up on your paper across here, like up this way. Does that make sense too? So you have the choice of either making your ocean horizon line lower, about a one third up from the bottom or you can make it two thirds up from the bottom and make the sky a little bit um, less uh, dominant in the composition and you have the ocean and the foreground more dominant. So that's up to you how you want to do this. Um, both look really great. It depends on maybe just how you want to approach your painting. For this one here, I think I'll go with one third and we'll just put a line across here like so. Uh, you can also use a ruler if you like, if you want to make sure it's exact, which sometimes can be really good. It can be effective if you get a, an exact level line across your paper. That can be really, that's important, I think. So if I just say to myself, how much is this up from the bottom? And I say, um, I'll just use centimeters, a little bit quicker. Uh, 4.5 centimeters up from the bottom here. Then I just come over here and say, all right, 4.5 over here too. Then I can come up like this, put the ruler across, like that, and there we get an exact level line across. Because that's important. You wouldn't wa we wouldn't want um, like our ocean to look like this. That would be really a, a problem. So we want to keep our ocean perfectly level, like so. So that's why we can measure it. Works better that way, probably. And maybe once if you know, or if you're like, you know, if you've been painting like five years, I mean, this is an extreme beginner's video. So if you're just starting out, you're probably not going to need, you know, you might need to measure it. And that's fine. That's, I still measure too all the time. Um, but maybe eventually we could do it by hand or by eye, I, I, would, I would say. So what I'll do now is this is going to be the ocean horizon line here. And then I'm going to make a little bit of some beach uh, area here. So maybe I'll do like a little bit of a beach area like here, kind of coming across like so on an angle. So maybe I'll start up here about halfway down from the horizon line here, a little bit above halfway, if that's halfway, a little bit above halfway. And then I kind of just trail across this way to make like almost like a little bit of a, some beach sand and things like that. And maybe we'll have some rocks. So we'll make some rocks here and there beach sand 
And this is going to be the uh, distant ocean here, like that, across. And what else? So we'll have some crashing waves coming in. We'll do some, a little bit of some ocean surf coming in. We'll make some really good looking ocean surf coming in. I think that'll look good. And then maybe, what else can we do? Why not? Let's do it. Maybe we'll do like a tree over here. So we'll just do a tree coming into the picture a little bit maybe. Like this. And it's going to be pretty good size, so it's going to go off the picture like so. And then we'll, like that. And then maybe there's some branches coming off this way and so forth. Maybe a few branches that way. And there's going to be a few more branches this way here. So we'll have a, just a little bit of a tree kind of to make things interesting over here. And some rocks over here. So you can kind of see I'm just putting in some information here. Then I'll go over a darker too. Let's go over a darker here. So one more time, I'll take the horizon line of the ocean across here and make that line all the way across. And again, if you want to use a ruler, perfect. You can do that too. That works fine. Then you come up. And then we're actually, then after the next thing we did is we just measured up about halfway up from the bottom to the, so about halfway between the bottom of the painting and the horizon line here of the ocean, halfway we started our beach here, our sand, beach sand, and we kind of just went across on an angle. That's all. You just go across on an angle and you want to finish up about over here in the corner of the painting somewhere. It doesn't have to be exact. Anywhere is fine. That's good. So we have some rocks over here too, like that. And we'll have some ocean surf over here. We'll paint that in. We won't necessarily draw in everything. And then over here, we're going to do our tree. So we're going to do a large kind of trunk of a tree coming up just to give us some uh, interesting nature feel with some tree trunks and tree branches. And we'll put a little bit of leaves and things on a few of these, just sparsely, a couple of leaf forms. Here and there. And I think that looks good. All right. So we have everything looking good. Now that we have the pencil work done, I can also always lighten up a little bit and erase a few pencil lines. Now that we see the pencil drawing is fine, I can just lift up a little bit of the pencil lines if I like. I usually do that. I'll just lift up a little bit of them, not all of them. And then we'll just take another quick break and come back and we'll start painting. And this one's going to be really fun. You're really going to enjoy this. It's just going to be all the exciting things you like about the ocean. The ocean waves, the distant uh, horizon line of the ocean, that dark line of the ocean, the beautiful sky wash we're going to put in. We're going to have this gorgeous tree and then we'll have some sand and some rocks. And again, it, it'll look just perfect as we... As we uh, work on this. I think it's going to look really fantastic. And again, it's not too difficult of a painting. So if you're an extreme beginner, you're going to have an easy time doing this one. This one's like kind of like it's a gift. You can just do it. It's not a big deal. We kind of went over everything we needed here. Um, the only other thing I think we could do is just um, we could maybe just put an insignia for where the light's coming from. So maybe we're going to make the light uh, coming from this side over here. So we'll make the light coming from this side of the picture this way. That'll help us when we start painting in our tree trunks and our tree limbs. We're going to want to keep the tree darker on the left side and have, have the tree trunk and the limbs lighter on the right side because the light's coming from this direction. And then other than that, the same thing with the rocks. When we start painting in our rocks, we're going to notice that the rocks are a little darker on the left sides like that. And they're a little bit lighter on the right side because that's where the light's actually coming from over here. So that's a few little tidbits of information that, that we can use to help us by adding that little bit of light insignia where the light is lighting up our um, scene here, our beautiful seascape scene. 
And uh, okay, I'm just going to take a quick break once again and um, um, be right back and we'll start painting. And I think we're going to use the same brushes we used on the first painting. We're going to use our Simply Simmons on this one. And I don't even know if we need another, really another brush. I think we can get everything done with that one brush. All right, so be right back. All right, our pencil drawing's done. We're going to get back now here and get started on the painting. I think here on this, um, we're going to do the a la prima method. Well, let's just paint this all at one time. This is similar to what we did w when we painted the flowers just a, you know, a short uh, few minutes back in the video. Uh, we didn't um, really do a, like, wash over the whole painting and then go back in and do darker washes over the top. We basically painted everything all at one time and we'll do the same thing with this one. We're going to paint this a la prima all at one time and I'm just going to paint it by uh, feel. A lot of times with art, once you learn, again this is in my book, again I cover it in detail in my book, the a la prima method and the glazing technique are two the two main methods that all, let's say, all most all professional artists use those two methods pretty much. They com they use combinations of both. So when you're beginning and you're starting in watercolor, if you learn both separately, you're really at an advantage because then you kind of you can use each one independently of each other anytime you want in any given painting, or you can blend them both together and use both at the same time in any given painting. So that's kind of why I like to really key in on the glazing technique and the a la prima technique as two different techniques. And then you sort of learn both of them separately. And then eventually after, let's say maybe one or two years, you'll be more comfortable and you can blend the two together and find that your paintings will be a lot easier to complete and to work through if you have both of those techniques really kind of um, under your belt, so to speak, where you kind of just have worked with them enough that you um, can use them in combination or separately, however you want to create your painting. And you're the artist. You're going to kind of pick out which way you want to create your painting. And sometimes you'll see a painting that you're going to do and you'll look at it and go, you'll you maybe draw your sketch in, your pencil sketch, and you'll look at it and go, and you'll look at your subject matter, maybe it's from a book or from a, a video or from outdoors, maybe you're painting outdoors or maybe you're looking at a photograph, whatever it is, you'll look at it and go, oh yeah, this one, I definitely have to paint this one a la prima. Or you might say, no, oh, I definitely have to paint this one glazing technique. You'll kind of know as you keep working in watercolor and it's just a feel thing, you'll get to it. You're going to always be progressing in watercolor as you're working on our channel here. We're always covering all the main techniques that we use in, in watercolor. So you'll get the, the hang of all of these techniques. So, but I always know that as you keep going in watercolor, eventually you're going to get to the point where you can look at anything you're going to draw or paint and you'll confidently be able to look at it and say, ah, yes, I'm going to use the glazing technique in this painting. Or, ah, I know I'm definitely going to use the a la prima technique in this painting. Or you might look at a painting and say, oh, I'm going to use both at the same time. I'm really not going to kind of key in on one. I'm just going to blend the two together because I really, uh, I don't think I need to do either one really exclusively. So that's really kind of the way I look at it. So if you learn both the glazing technique and a la prima, You'll be uh, fine. So here we're going to use the a la prima. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is, um, since we didn't have a, a lot of paint in our palette here, uh, you can kind of see it's pretty much still a clean palette. We didn't use a lot of like dark darks. and So we can just start right out and just use the palette as it is. It's probably a good thing right now. We're going to use our spritzer bottle. Holbein spritzer bottles are great. I buy like two or three at a time. They last me years. And I'll just spritz this one more time. Okay. And we'll get our blue here, which is our kind of like ultramarine cobalt blue. If you're, I know many of you that watch my channel. Thank you so much for watching here on my channel on a constant basis year after year even. I know many of you years, I've, I see you in the comments section. Thank you for leaving comments. I know many of you probably don't leave comments anymore, but you're still with me after many, many years now. I've been on YouTube probably 10 years now. Um, I know you watch and 
you're probably using maybe your standard palette that you have two paints. So this would be like a cobalt blue or French ultramarine blue. This is like a cerulean blue. So between those two we're pretty good to start off with and we'll start getting in our our distant And I just go right across and I have my hand on the on the paper at all times on my pad on my working board here. And if you want me to go over my working board and how I work with my watercolors and my paintings and my process here, let me know. I'll I'll do a video on that if you want me to. I think I've already done one about how I use my board and everything like that, but Okay, so there we have it. You could even add in a little bit of brown, blue, and you can make it a little bit darker on the top here. Here and there, not everywhere. A couple spots of dark and like that. Then we'll put in a little bit of this here, which is looks just like Viridian. Viridian green, which is sort of like a um, turquoise green. That looks great with uh, ocean. And then what I like to do now is blend these together like this. And then start to put in some of those white caps and waves coming in. like that. Okay, and then here and then I usually add a little bit of orange splash a little bit of paint on there. As we get closer to the shoreline there's sand like that. So that's why I add that orange in there because that's going to be our kind of sand color there. Orange. So really you can kind of see we haven't used a lot of colors. And you can see we have our waves coming in. And then you can go in and get some more of that brown, blue. Add a little bit of water if you need to to get your blue reactivated here a little bit. And I like to get that little bit of darker wash on the top there. And for some reason, if you have an issue where you have a, um, a problem with getting the top of your ocean straight, I always like to just use the tape. And you can see how fun this is and easy. You just take a piece of the thin tape like this, the masking tape or artist tape. And then you just, you know what, you just go across the top here. Make sure it's straight and across the paper. You might want to measure it before you put the tape down. Then once you put the tape down, you just carefully, with the uh, tip of your brush, just press the very, very edge of the tape across this area here. And that's all you have to do. And then you'll, then we can get a perfectly straight line here. There we go. That will get you that perfect line there. Maybe in some green. Ah, oh, I forgot to put in that green. That's what I needed to put in there. That green. 
across there. A couple of splashes of fresh clean water. Like that. Then I take some tissue. So these are little techniques you can use. You splash on a little bit of fresh clean water at the same time after you put your tape on there. And you can even just do a little bit of that. You blot up a little bit. And that gives you the feel of like the water splashing around a little bit. But I would leave that tape on there for a few minutes. So don't lift up the tape right away. Let that sit there for a few minutes. And then let's go in and get our orange. And a little bit of blue is fine if you mix in a little bit of blue with your orange. And we're going to get the beach sand in here. And I'll blend the beach color right into the sand of the ocean coming in like this. I'll go right over the tree trunk too, not a big deal. I'll go right over the tree trunk there. Just like this. Okay. That looks pretty good. So now, what we have to do is, we have to let this dry though before we peel up this tape for our perfect horizon line. So that's where, let's let this dry. So now I'm just going to set my brush down, even though I know we want to keep going, and I'm like, I'm the same as you. I always want to keep going in a painting, because it's so exciting. I, I can't wait to do the next part of the painting. We're, we have the sky to do next, then we're going to do the tree, the tree trunks and the tree limbs, and have fun doing that, and finish up the rocks and things. So I always like to always push forward too and keep working on my paintings. I think we all do that. And that's why I always mention, take some breaks. It really just helps you to kind of just relax for a few minutes. And then when you come back to your painting, you, you can kind of be a little more like planning a little bit and say, all right, what am I going to do next? Whereas if you keep working, you might forget to take a step back and take a pause in what you're doing and say to yourself, mm, what do I want to do next? So there's a real powerful... Um, uh, there's a there's a powerful effect you can have with your paintings when you're taking breaks and coming back and before you go in and keep working you pause for a few minutes and think about what am I going to do next how am I going to do what I want to do next and you're looking at your book or your photograph or if you're outdoors and you're painting outdoors you'll look at things too and say mm, I'm looking out there and I'm saying, hmm, I might want to change something. I don't think I want to do what I'm seeing in front of me the same exact way. I want to change something. So all those things are real important. So always remember, you always have the freedom to change what you're working on. If you're working on a painting, whether it's from a book, again, a photograph, outdoors if you're painting outdoors in plain air, whatever it is, you always have the freedom to change things a little bit to make it easier for you, for you to paint and create your artwork. So always remember that. You're the artist. You are in charge you create the painting the way you want to paint it. You're, you create your art the way you want to paint your art. You're not simply following uh, a photograph exactly or a picture or if, if you're, you know, have a still life set up in front of you. You can do, you can change anything you want at any time to suit your own needs to make your painting look better or whatever the way you want it to look. So always remember that good, solid advice on, uh, always remembering that you can change your artwork and create it any way you want to. You're in charge of it. You, No one can tell you. You're the one that's going to create it the way you feel you need to paint it and, and create it. Okay? All right. So let's let this dry. We'll come right back. All right. We are well on our way here on this one. So let's lift this up here. Wow, <laughs> look how perfect that is. So you can see if you use some tape to get your level uh, line across for your ocean, that goes a long way. It looks just perfect. And that's how you see that when you're out at the ocean, on the beach, and you're looking out at the ocean. It's always perfectly 
level. And it's a straight, really straight line pretty much all the way. The water just, you could use like a, you could hold up a ruler when you're out at the ocean. And the ocean horizon line would be exactly straight as the, the ruler. So, now what I'm going to do is try to, let me start working on this, this tree here tree trunk. So again, I'll use some brown, a little bit of water, I'll use some damp, damp brush. And it's a little bit darker on this side over here, so I'll get that dark line on the left side of the tree trunk. And I'll do the same thing over here, I'll try to get that dark line. And the same thing trying to just like this okay and then once you have that dark line on the left side you can take your brush dry off a little bit of the water on a tissue so you just have a damp brush now once you dry off that water fresh clean water you rinse off your brush dry it off on a tissue and then you can kind of just blend over this other half of the tree trunk with that lighter wash. And you can kind of see how that blends nicely. And there we have it. So that bit of a damp brush, and then I might take some of the dark darks, the brown with the blue and the green a little bit there, that mix, and just dry off the brush a little more. And I'll just get a few more little bits of branches and limbs and things just to finish up our tree here. We don't want to go too, um, too much detail, just a couple more little bits of uh, branches there. And then, um, I say we go in and get some darks here for the rocks. And I'll do the same kind of method here and technique where you get the, le the left side of the rocks first with the dark dark. Just like this. Like that. <clears throat> Make that rock a little larger there, like so. Then I'll take my brush, rinse it off, dry it off on a paper towel or tissue. And I'll just add that really light bit of wash to the right side there. Like that. For a few of those rocks, then I might take a little bit of the darker with some orange here, get some of that, and I'll just do some splashing here where the rocks might be on the shore. If you have some splashes that go over there, you just lift them up quick with a tissue. Okay. Lights coming from this way, we could put a little shadow of the tree here. Same thing with the rocks. Okay, then I think we're ready to do the sky. So what I'll do is I'll change the water now, my water <laughs> pail. Uh, you can see it's a little bit muddy looking, the water. It's kind of muddy looking a little bit, like, you know, it's kind of got that muddy... I'd rather have fresh, clean, crystal clear water. 
So I'll take some fresh water. And that's much better. See how clear that is? That's what you want when you're going to do your sky. You want to have fresh, clean water. Now for our sky wash. Um, I think we can just kind of revitalize this over here. I think that's fine. We're going to need some blue for the sky, but not a whole lot. Maybe a little bit of that there too. A little bit of grayish color looks good for the sky. Now let's just have a fun time with the sky and not really get too worried. First thing we'll do is we'll just add some fresh, clean water first to the very, very tippy top of the sky. Not too much around the branches though, because the branches will get re activated and they'll start to blur and look really messy. So I'm not really going to do too much there. I'm just going to add some water uh, and then dampen the paper and then blot up the extra uh, excess water, I should say. So there I, I blot up the excess water when I add it to the paper up here quickly. But over here I leave this go. I add the extra water up here and I let that sit on the paper Fresh, clean water. I blotted on the paper over here on this side. Like this. Okay. And then I leave it, that water to sit on there for a few minutes. And I don't take that fresh, clean water and bring it down and have it touch where the ocean is. Because we just painted that really fine, beautiful line there. So we want to stay kind of like away from that paint line that we have across here. That Does that make sense? Another thing you could do is take your damp brush and then just paint some damp paper right above that, right above that fresh paint that we just put on there with the tape. You could also take your brush and just go across with a damp brush and leave a space between that paint. And then again, I add some fresh, clean water to the brush, damp brush, basically. And I go across like this, but I don't touch that paint that we just painted on there with the tape. I paint a line of fresh water with a damp brush so that when the water flows down, it won't go into the water, into the darker ocean horizon line there, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we have all of our wet clean water on our paper and then we're going to go with darker washes up top up here I blot that up a little bit so it doesn't affect the uh, And I just go across like this. And that's it. And then I take my tissue if you want to. You could take your tissue, kind of roll it up a little bit like this. And you can do a few clouds. And then for the finishing touch, we want to add a little bit of orange to the bottom. So I just lift up some of the paint out of the little bit of orange. Just straight orange, but not too much, just a little bit. And then we can add that down here. And then I blend that up into the sky a little bit. Just like that. Then if you want, with a clean damp brush, you can dry off the brush. Rinse it off. Fresh clean water, rinse it off. And then you can just very carefully blend that orange down. And 
there, but it's got you got to be very. I would say be very careful if you do that when you blend this down, this orange paint down here. Just like that. And I think that is good. We are complete here. Oh, one more thing. You could add a little bit of green. Uh, a little bit of green. But I what I would do is for this, I would definitely let this dry, the sky dry first. I'll just do it so that we kind of have an idea. Okay, just a little bit of touch there of some green and maybe a little bit of gold, yellow, a little bit of yellow. Okay, and that is it. We're good. We have some really beautiful effects here of the sky wash meeting up with the distant ocean horizon line. We have some beach, some rocks, a really nice tree trunk here um, on the beach with some rocks and pebbles and sand. The only thing we could maybe do, just one more thing we could do, is we can take a little bit of white, titanium white, put some titanium white over here in the palette where we mixed up the orange. A little bit of water in there. I mean, not water. Um, if you have that orange left over there, that's good. A little bit of a damp brush there, and you can see if you can get a little bit of just splash on a little bit of white paint, like that, and that can give you that little bit of a look of uh, water and things splashing around at the ocean here, where we're thinking about the beach here and the waves coming in a little bit of water splashing around you have that little bit of effect there with a little bit of the white paint titanium white on the palette with a touch of orange and just a very very little bit of orange and a little bit of damp brush with a little tiny bit of water just to get some splashes there and that is it all right let's peel off the tape And look how fantastic that looks. And that is our second painting. We're going to do maybe, let's do one more. Since we're really on a roll here, let's do it. Let's do one more painting. And uh, we're having fun so far. And again, I'm hoping you're going to thumbs up. If you like this video, please go right down there, hit thumbs up. And while you're there, please, you got to subscribe on the right hand side below this screen here on the right hand side there's a subscribe button if you're here for the first time well wow i'm happy you're here this is great that you're here you you're at the perfect place at the perfect time to learn watercolors we create new videos every week so you're going to be here you join up every week with us here you come along you paint you draw you have a great time um so that's what you do if you subscribe you'll just youtube will notify you that we've made a new video we're making new videos every week so you'll be alerted when new videos come out so you don't lose track of us. I don't want you to lose track of what we're doing here. So that's all you do is if you sit, hit the subscribe button and you click on the uh, notification bells, there's little bell icons there w next to the uh, subscribe button. You click on all notifications and that means that you'll, every time we make a new video, which is about once or twice a week, sometimes three times a week, depends how um, much time I can squeeze in to get new videos out. But Always remember, we're doing work here every week, so if you subscribe, you'll be notified, and then you can join along with us, or at least watch. Watching is almost just as important as actually painting. So always remember that. When you watch videos, you might not necessarily have to pick up your brushes and your pencils and your paper and paints. If you're watching, it's ex extremely valuable to be watching what we're doing, too, as well, because you're going to learn a lot just by watching and hearing, too. If you're listening to all of what we're talking about, you'll be hearing all about colors, tonal values. You'll be learning about techniques. You'll be learning about design. You'll be learning about all the methods that we use with the 
uh, we're using the glazing technique. We're using the alla prima technique. Um, we're covering how much lights and darks do you want in your painting. So all these things we're covering. So if you're just watching, you're going to be way ahead of the game, learning a lot, getting better at your watercolor just by watching. And I'm hoping you're also going to be picking up your pencils and your brushes and your paints and your paper and uh, joining along with us too. Okay, so uh, we're going to get started in just a second with our third painting. And um, let me take a quick break. I'm going to get reset up here. I'm going to get some more paper and uh, we'll get geared up for our next painting in just a second. All right, we are going for the gusto here. We are actually working on number three, our Extreme Beginner series here. We're doing three paintings. We're not going to just, uh, you know, give up without a fight here. We're going to push on. Let's do one more. This one should be really fun and exciting. We're going to do like a beautiful English, large English mansion. And these are incidentally five by seven paintings. So the paintings that we've been doing are sort of like five by sevens. And again, we talked about how we took the 11 by 14 paper and we split it into four sections so that we could have four sheets of paper. So now we're using five by seven sheets of paper that we made from just one sheet of an 11 by 14. So now I'm just going to keep working the uh, tape here to get the tape around the paper. Just like this. One more over here. And that should be fine. Great. We have a nice crisp clean line around the whole composition here. And then you can always, too, if you want to, you can add a pencil line around the tape like this. It's up to you. You're the artist. You're going to do different things. But that might be uh, good to do. Okay, and again, we talked about this being like a 5 by 7 so it's 5 across and 7 high. And again, let's, let's make this painting... If we take this and say, let's make this, you know, thirds. So we're going to do... Here's the bottom and the top, and then we could say if we go one third, one third, one third, that's about here and about here. So one third here, two thirds, and three thirds going up the paper. And then we'll say that pretty much let's bring the most of the subject matter in this painting to the top two-thirds so one-third and two-thirds and then here let's start kind of thinking of ourselves let's make the roofs over here like this of our English mansions so we have there we go we go across there and then maybe over here we're gonna leave a little bit of something over here like let's let's make an angle over here just to make it a little more interesting so let's put a line there Okay, so here we went one-third up, two-thirds, and we went across here like so. And then we went all the way across and we found a point here and we said, okay, let's make that down there. And then I think we'll make the uh, road like this, like so. So this is going to be like a street scene. A street scene with a street leading in like this. So let's do our line like this. So you can kind of see we have the line of the road here, the street, coming in like this. Like this. And then this line comes down here. This is going to be the edge of these buildings here. And then here, we're going to make... Uh, maybe we'll even move this over a little bit this way. Let's see if we can do that. Let's do this. And this is going to be the chimney up here. Like 
like this. This wall comes down here. Like that. Okay, like this, and then this is here. We have a, that might be the roof over here. And the roof might be over here. And then we might have like a small dormer over here. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just breaking this down into smaller. So this is sort of like this here. Two thirds up to the one third, two thirds, and then I have the roof line here. And then we do a, like a triangle up here, like that. So then you put a triangle on top over here, and you come in a little bit and put another line down this way. So this gives you your main mansion over here. So that's like a square here, or a little bit like a rectangle here. Then a triangle on top of that. This line goes straight across here where the roof meets the walls. And then you have a chimney on top of this triangle here. And that chimney will come down like this. Like this. We'll just put the chimney straight on down like so. And there's maybe some clay pots on top like that. Two clay chimney pots on top. Like that. Okay. And then this comes up over here and then we might have another building over here like this. So these are buildings over here too. These are maybe are apartment buildings or other mansions that are alongside. And this might be a... Okay, so these are other buildings alongside over here. And then this is a dormer with another window here. And then you have another window over here. And then another window over here. And I might slim these up a little bit, these windows here, like that. This one here, actually, I'm going to change these up a little bit. These two windows are going to be under here, under the eave of the roof there. And then these two windows here are going to be there. There we go. And then we're going to have another two windows here, like that. And then another window down here, like so. Like that. So you can kind of see how we just have these buildings, these this mansion and some shrubs over here. We're going to do some shrubs and bushes over here and trees. Some grass over here. And then maybe over here we'll have little turns over here like so. And we'll have some grass here. And some shrubs up here. Like that. And there might be some shadows over here coming into the picture. For, from trees over here on the right side that we necessarily might not see. And then we'll have a couple more chimneys over here. Like that, so another couple of chimneys over here. And I think that looks good.
Okay, so now we're ready to paint. Let's again take a quick break. So we have our drawing in. Always remember that uh, when you're painting, you can make changes as you go when you're painting. Okay, you can make changes as you go when you paint. But I think that gives us enough pencil lines that we have our main building here right in the center, which is our mansion here, our uh, English uh, mansion. And we have like a large fireplace, beautiful fireplace, another few fireplaces over here. And there might be some other buildings over here too. And you have a beautiful courtyard with uh, maybe a beautiful uh, uh, cinder uh, driveway and a patio area over here on the back of the building with some shrubs and flowers and plantings. So I will add some more shrubs and things over here. Okay, so we're going to do some interesting stuff like this. Plantings and bushes and trees. And then we'll have a simple sky up top with some beautiful blue simple sky. Nothing too fancy. Okay, so we're going to come back. We're going to mix up our washes and we'll get right into this. And this will be another a la prima painting. We're just going to go everything one time. Okay, all right, we'll be right back. All right, let's get rolling again here. So first thing I'd like to do is we used a lot of paint on our uh, second painting with the ocean. Let's, let's spritz our palette and just uh, clean that up a bit. Doesn't have to be perfect when you clean up your palette, just enough that you get up all the major bits of uh, paint like that. That other little bit of residue is never going to hurt anything. Probably will enhance the paint. Uh, again, we're starting out a new painting. We're going to start out with fresh, clean water. So you can see this water in here is kind of murky. And I also mixed white, titanium white. If you're mixing like a titanium white into your paintings, Maybe at the end of your painting, you're doing some highlights or something like that, or some effects with some titanium white. It makes the water really chalky looking, and uh, you want to empty out your water bucket and start out with fresh, clean water. So that's why I'm going to do that. So I've just put in some fresh, clean water, and um, we spritzed our palette, so that's good. And again, I'm going to use my same... Uh, paintbrush here that I've been using the whole time now. My Simply Simmons number nine synthetic round brush. And we're going to just keep working along here so we're ready to paint. And we wanted to kind of make a an English mansion. So let's get some brown and some orange, some yellow. We're going to make like a yellow ochre color maybe. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, green in there. some blue. So what I'll do is I'll keep mixing these colors until I, or I'll mix the color that I think looks most close to what I want to have. And that looks pretty good. I think you can add a little bit of more a cool blue over here and then leave it more warmer over here. So you might have like one side of your compartment that you're, uh, you know, you're your palette you might have one of your sections of your palette where you make like a brown kind of a yellowy brown almost like a like a ye uh, ochre yellow ochre and then you might add in some green to make half of the mix like a warmer or a cooler like with some yellow with some uh, green some of that turquoise green or viridian green you add some of that to half of that and you leave the other half more of the warmer color which kind of looks like a yellow ochre and I think that looks pretty good you have kind of like a warm and cool mixture and then we're going to just start out right at the top I'm just going to start right out here and we'll just start our chimney like that and I'm just going to maybe start out
like that. And then you can see I'm just going to take both of these colors and just go right on down. I'm going to paint around the windows. So as you can see I'm just going to be doing this one section here right to start with which is the uh, this English mansion and I'm going to paint around the windows again like that. So you can see I painted around the windows and then I'll paint over the top with our darker greens for our bushes and things, trees and plantings over here on the, uh, over down here on this section down this way. But let's get the rest of the, there we go, look at that. Let's get the chimneys. So I'm using that same mixture that we started with and just going right on through the whole portion of this building. Okay, and there might be some shadowing here. There we go. We are really just moving right along here beautifully. Let's get all of this over here too. These are all the buildings over here. They're all going to be the same kind of like that same tone, tonal value. We can add darker or more colorful washes over the top of this first wash. But let's just get this first wash in. And then um, we're going to add a little more green. For some cooler. Cooler uh, ground. The ground here is more cooler. These might be the stones and the cinders on the ground, like that. And we'll tie that in to the bottom here too, some of that color. And then I just leave this one section a little bit lighter, even still. Like that. Perfect. Look how good that looks. All right. So you can see we kind of did a glazing over the whole entire painting. Except for the sky, we did everything in that kind of like you know brownish orange and a little bit of green too all right there we go Perfect. All right, so we have everything looking really good. OK, 
Okay. All right, so this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to get in that light brown and kind of greenish brown wash over all of the buildings that we drew, drew in here, as well as a little bit of that cooler touch of like blue for the cinders and the stones here in the stone driveway in the foreground here, leading up to the building, leading our eyes into the building. Next thing we're gonna do is let this dry 100% come back in and then we're going to add some shrubs with some nice beautiful greens and um, we'll finish up with some sky washes and this this painting will be done before you know it and we'll also add some really exciting darks to the windows uh, and some of the shadow areas so you'll kind of see how we do this all we'll bring it all together put it all together for a really beautiful finish here on this gorgeous English mansion um, another beautiful painting here we're creating so we're doing three paintings and um, this is the great way to paint if you can just kind of work maybe a whole day take like take a block out a day maybe like for eight hours or six hours and just work through this whole video you'll you'll be amazed you'll have three beautiful paintings completed and i think that'll really make you very very excited about your paintings especially when you're an extreme beginner you're just starting out you want to get like two three paintings right away get in there do two or three and i'm guarantee you one of the three is going to turn out good or very good maybe one's going to not go so great no problem but at least if you're doing three paintings one of the three should look pretty good so you're going to get probably good results on at least one of them where you're going to get you're going to be really happy with what you're creating maybe another two you're going to be like somewhat happy with them but you might be really happy about one of them that you just feel wow really came out great so that's what i want you to do do three paintings you know you're going to get some good results out of all those three paintings the ones we're doing right here right now you're going to have a good, um, uh, some good results with this. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back. I'm going to let this dry for a few more minutes and we'll get started again. We'll, again, we'll put in some darks, some sky wash, and we'll be done. A little bit of shrubs too. All right. We are back and we are going to get started again here. So what did we say we wanted to do next? Well, we wanted to get in some of the darker darks. Now you can kind of see we have mostly middle tonal values here, middle tonal values you know not too dark not too light the middles lots of the middle tones that's good quite a bit of light so far we have some lights down here lights in the windows lights up here in the sky although we're going to make this sky a bluer which is going to be more of a middle tone so you're going to kind of see how once we're done it's going to be mostly middle tones the whole painting okay all right so again i'm going to mix some greens up let's get some greens mixed here we're going to make some really good looking greens for our bushes. So I'll take some green and then we're going to make it to a um, uh, some blue and some brown to get those to be like a nice really dark olivey green. I think that should look good. And then we're just going to get take some of those greens. Look how good that looks. Maybe we'll take some more browns, touch a red. Up here, touch of red, brown, greens. Change up the color a little bit, like that. Okay, so we're gonna have some of those dark darks there. I might add a little bit of water to these and then just do a couple splashes. Okay. Okay, and this one here like so, and then this down here. And then we'll do a few more over here. So we're just doing some bushes and trees like this. And then some more over here. A little bit of orange, kind of change up the color just a little bit, maybe a little bit of an orangey green, like that. Okay, and then this over here. This over here is going to be Okay, so we have the 
shrubs and the trees over here on both sides. A couple of splashes like that just to give us some more variety here. Like that, some more variety. Like this. Okay. Then we're going to blue, brown, blue, purple, touch of black. Around. Okay, we're going to do a really, really dark dark, and that's going to be really exciting. We're going to add some dark darks here. Like that. And then the same thing here, some dark darks here. Okay, so now here we're adding some really, really dark darks where these windows are. Some shadows under here. So these are the really, really dark darks we're going to add in. You can add in a little bit of those darks too where the bushes are if you want to add in a few. few of those dark darks there for the bushes like that then you could take those dark darks too and then kind of spin off and make a little bit of a orangey really really dark dark here and maybe make a like a feature on the side of the the building here. Maybe that could be like a brick chimney or something on the side of the, the building here. Maybe up here too. This might be a dark. Like that. And what I'll do is I, I won't put those chimney pots on top until we're done with the sky wash. That's one thing I definitely, uh, I know I don't want to add that. Alright, so now let's add some purple, green, pick up a little bit of the darks there, purple, green, blue. Let's make some shadow colors over here too. This is some shadowing mystery shadowing over here coming from this side of the painting over here a little bit of warm in there too warm and cool for the shadows Maybe a little bit of uh, yellow. For some grass over here. There we go. And maybe some more grass over here too. Like that there. Okay, so now these shadows over here, these are coming from
trees on this side over here. We don't necessarily see them, but we know that they're there. And then now we'll do one more thing. We have muddy water in our pail. We want to do the sky wash last. We dump out all of our muddy water. And then get some fresh clean water for our water pail. Okay. And then we just say, let's use this. Maybe that's going to look really good. This blue for the sky. Yeah, that's going to look perfect. All right, so now we're going to have some really good looking sky wash, some blue like that. Best way to do this too is just go in a la prima and then you can just just do that however you want to put it in. Like that. Okay. And there we go. Does that not look good? And a couple touches of that blue over here and over there and a little bit a couple of blue if you add a little bit of that blue very, very subtly. That's going to kind of tie everything all together. There we go. Perfect. All right, so all we have to do now is let this dry 100%. That might take a couple hours. If you have a blow dryer, it might only take 10 minutes. It's up to you. I'm going to actually use my blow dryer and blow dry off the sky wash and then I can put my chimney pots in on the tops of these chimneys and that's all there really is left to do and then other than that everything is perfect. We could put in a couple figures too. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll add a few figures just to really really add some more excitement to this this painting but already it looks really good. So uh, let me dry this off with a blow dryer for 5-10 minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just used the blow dryer and I have this dry now. Um, I just wanted to add maybe a touch of color to this uh, top here of this uh, dormer here. So this dormer has a, a roof, a roof on there. So I just wanted to add a little bit, a little touch of uh, that color there, and then maybe even two. We'll add some highlights under here, some shadows, I, sh I should say, like that. And then maybe some shadows under here too. There's the eave of the roof here. So that is under there. And then we might have a little bit of a little bit of um, wash along the sides of the chimney to kind of give it a little bit of definition so we can kind of see the chimney now a little more if we just put a little bit of maybe a couple things little spots of color alongside the chimney here 
that gives that chimney a little more definition like so we can kind of see it it's and this is the other side here okay there's a little bit of shadow there so you can add in some shadows And then we can add some more of those chimney pots in there. These are clay, clay chimney pots here. Okay, and then I think that's fine. Let's add a few figures in. Why not? Let's take some of our and let's make our few figures. Let's make let's make two figures here. Okay, so we're gonna do the upper body. This is like we're doing carrots. We're gonna do a carrot shape like that. So that's the one. Kind of like a carrot there, and then two. Let's do another one here. Uh, let's do this one here a little bit more. This one here. Like that. And then we'll do a couple uh, small, just bits of... Uh, that a couple of figures like that so we have a little bit of shadow there and if you have to lift up a little bit that sometimes you have to make a little there we go and I think that's perfect let's peel off the tape and kind of see how it's going to look when we have that nice border around our paper. You lift up your tape. Looks much better now. Once we're lifting up the tape. And there we go. All right, so we've done an English mansion, a couple of figures, some gorgeous uh, architectural features, the beautiful stone kind of look to the buildings and the roofs. Um, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're painting along with me and we're painting all together here on my channel. Um, and again, this is the extreme beginner series. So we're kind of using really like beginners gear when you're starting in watercolor, you don't want to go out and spend, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars on, uh, brushes and paints and all these kind of things. If you don't even know if you're going to really enjoy it or like watercolor, but if you are starting out in watercolor here and it's your first time, thanks so much for coming by. I'm sure you're going to do a great job of it. It's just a matter of getting started and following along with us. So if you're watching all of our videos here, and again, I always mention if you subscribe on the right-hand side below, that means you're just going to be alerted for, you know, YouTube will let you know when our new videos come out. That's basically what subscribe is. If you subscribe on the right-hand side below and you click the notification bells, which are the all notifications, the top bell icon, there's little icons there and there's a little bell that's a, uh, on the right hand side on the top if you click that top bell that just means that each time we create a new video you will 
the next time you open up YouTube, you'll just see that we've made a new video. And this way you can follow along or you can just watch if you're not maybe, if you don't have the time to actually paint along with us or work on the projects, you can at least watch them in your free time. And you'll learn a lot just by watching and listening. That's for sure. That's a critical part of watercolor is watching videos, listening, hearing all the terminology, the terms, and of course, seeing what we're doing, watching it over and over again, you just become more familiar with it. And that's really a key to becoming really good at watercolors is actually watching videos and listening and kind of keying in on what actually goes on when it comes to watercolors. Because there's a lot of stuff going on at one time, as you know. If you're just starting out, you'll probably see that on this video, that there's a lot of things going on at one time. So if you're watching again and learning as you go, you're going to do fine. You're going to do wonderfully. So let's uh, come back another time again really, really soon. Within the next couple of days or so, we'll be making new videos. If you're subscribed below on the right-hand side, you'll see, uh, be alerted when the new videos come out. And if you really like this video, please thumbs it up. This way, uh, YouTube will know that they want to share this video more with other people that are looking to learn how to do watercolor. So when you're thumbsing up, you're helping other people that maybe are just like you that are just starting out and they want to learn watercolor and they just don't know where to start. This is a great starting point here on my channel. So if you're thumbsing up the videos, that means more people are going to kind of get started on my videos here, what we're doing here together. So great to have you here with us. We'll see you soon. Okay. On the next video. Very soon. Bye-bye.